way I came up with that part of the list was just take my, my SP plus rankings and add up all the games and basically like, what are the two most like highly rated games of each week, which worked last year really well. This year is a little weird because Georgia, Alabama and Ohio state are so dramatically far ahead of the rest of the field in terms of these pro- projections that any game that it involved Georgia was going to rank pretty high, just same with Alabama too. And so, yeah, there are certainly, it kind of spells out wh- which weeks are really big and then which weeks only maybe have one huge game because then you see like Georgia, South Carolina or Ohio State, Maryland on the list. Uh, so I, I don't know if that part worked quite as well this year as it did last year. Yeah, I was going to ask you about those Bama games. Obviously, Alabama, Texas is on the list as well. Auburn, Alabama, because how can you not put the Iron Bowl on that one? Right. But Alabama, Texas is going to be a game that we're looking forward to seeing for years and years to come. What do you think the meter looks like on that one as far as a fun perspective goes? <laughs> Well, I guess it's up to Texas to decide how fun it is. I think we all have this vision. We, we know how these usually work out for whoever Alabama is playing in the early season. So it's really kind of up to Texas to live up to its end of the bargain. Honestly, I'm not completely sure that they're going to. That, that defense, obviously the, the focus was on Quinn Ewers and, and Hudson Card in the quarterback battle, but the defense was the reason they uh, missed a bowl last year. And if you're still trying to figure out, put the pieces together on that side of the ball and you have to face Alabama in week two, that's, I'm not thinking that works out very well for you, but we could, I could be wrong. This Maybe this is the year Texas is indeed back, and that turns out to be a great game. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if Texas is indeed <laughs> back. The age-old question. I'm not even going to ask you about A&M Bama because that needs no explanation. If you need an explanation, <laughs> you've been sleeping under a rock. I, I want to go to Arkansas right now because I'm already getting a little bit of grief on Twitter. A couple segments ago, I was asked about overrated teams, and I did not call Arkansas overrated, but they were a team that came to mind where I said, you know what? This is one of those squads that I need to wait and see. They lost a lot of talent. I want to see what they look like within the first couple of weeks. You have Arkansas as a team of chaos in this article. Why is that? Uh, so, again, with my SP Plus projections, um, I, I use those as kind of like a how many close games is this team going to be in kind of list. Arkansas topped it. They have like eight games that are projected within a touchdown. Uh, when you – you know, take into account the fact that my number still like Cincinnati a good amount, so that's one right out of the gate. Uh, but the A&M game, the Mississippi State game, the BYU game, the Auburn game, LSU, Ole Miss, maybe Missouri. It, it's it's a it, it's one of those schedules that could go in about 18 different directions. And if they can close out some close games, they can have another great season. They could threaten 10 and two. You know, it could be an amazing year. But if they're just a, a hair worse than that, that's like six more losses right there. And so it could. They, they are a team of chaos in that, like, it feels like both 4-8 and eight and 10-2 and two are, 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 are at least slightly on the table. It's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm stressed if I'm Coach Pittman at this point. I mean, he's no stranger <laughs> at this point to having a tough schedule yeah. because they've had one since the moment he walked on campus. So I'm buying Arkansas as a chaos team as well. You also have some fun rivalry matchups broken down in this article. Ole Miss, Arkansas being one of those. You remember what happened last year. <laughs> That's enough said. But you also have Missouri, South Carolina in there. Two earlier or younger head coaches when it comes to the SEC and Coach Drink and Coach Beamer. What do you foresee when when it comes to fireworks for that rivalry game. It, it's just funny. That's, it, that seems to be one of the most reliably messy, chaotic games on the SEC <laughs> schedule from, I guess, from year to year. And I mean, as, as you know, Missouri has been here 10 years now, but they're still a relative newcomer and you just need as many of those moments as possible to get people fired up and to get people to understand how big a game it is. I think three of the last four, something like five of the last nine, something to that effect, uh, have gone down to the wire, have been a one score game or very close to it. And that, you know, you start to pick up on things that like that after a while, like no matter what happens, that game's probably going to be close and the winner. It's going to be a pretty big deal to whoever wins it. We're talking with Bill Connolly, college football writer at ESPN. Just put out a great piece. Head over to ESPN.com to read it about how to have the most fun with your college football season. Uh, Bill, we've been talking mostly about the SEC at this point. We posed a question earlier in the show. Outside of your favorite team, who do you enjoy watching the most? So if somebody's still looking for an answer to that question, (laughs) after all the deep diving that you've done about 2022, who else should we have our eye on outside of the conference to bring us some fun games? I think the most chaotic conference, and that's usually what I'm looking for if I'm talking about, you know, just something to enjoy, not necessarily somebody to root for. The most chaotic conference, I think, this year and most years is is the Big 12. Like, every game is decided by three points, it feels like. And that was definitely the case last year where Baylor and Oklahoma State both made the title game basically because they won the most close games. And so 
I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about those two, Baylor and Oklahoma State. I'm curious about the, 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 the old school chaos potential of Texas Tech this year. They could be decent, and they're going to have a high flying offense again. That feels right. Like, you know, get back to it, you know, it's it's 2002 all over again. Get back to Texas Tech being a you know, fun underdog that can suck anybody into a 52 to 49 game. That feels right to me. You don't have to root for them, but you're probably going to enjoy watching them regardless. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.